Welcome to Science or Nonsense, where we're going to be busting a bunch of myths about planks. Why do I have a logo of the Globe and Mail in here? Because this is from an article in the Globe and Mail, a very, a very popular Toronto-based newspaper about the benefits of great plank variations. There are just so many things in this article that I think are not correct, that I strongly disagree with and that are spreading misinformation that I thought I would film a video about it. Now, before I get in there, uh, this is nothing personal about the author. I personally left the author's name out of this screenshot. Of course, you could find it if you're really curious, but this is not against the author. This is just against the information in this article. So here's what we're going to cover in this video. First, we'll talk about what is a plank. A lot of people are using the term plank incorrectly. So let's talk about what it actually is. Then one of the uh, claims that the article makes is that planks help with things like push-ups, pull-ups, burpees, and mountain climbers. But do they really? So we'll talk about that in this section. Then we'll talk about what is the Copenhagen plank and how does it relate to the regular plank, the shoulder tap plank, as well as the body saw. These are all variations of the plank, but how useful are they really? That's what we're going to cover in this video. So before we jump in, uh, who am I? My name is Igor. I am an author of 13 books on exercise and nutrition, including four Amazon bestsellers. As well, I've been a certified personal trainer since 2006. I have a bachelor's degree in kinesiology and health science from York University. As well, I'm a trainer of trainers. I've been presenting at uh, personal training conferences since 2013, teaching other trainers my methodology. And it's been some of uh, some of the largest uh, personal training corporations in the world, like CanFit Pro, the National Strength and Conditioning Association, Certified Professional Trainers Network, and others. Additionally, um, I'm one of uh, Canada's uh, most popular wellness speakers, having done over 400 presentations to some of the largest corporations around, like IBM, Bosch, American Express, University of Toronto, Investors Group, and others. Uh, before we dive in, if you want great information about exercise, nutrition, fitness, and so on, like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So let's jump in. Let's talk about what is a plank. A plank is this exercise. You are on your feet and your elbows and you're holding that position. Now, here's the reason for the confusion. This comes out of yoga, okay? In yoga, they call two, two different things. The one on your palms, they call it a high plank. The one on your elbows is called the low plank. But uh, my, my preference is to actually have different terminology. And I'll tell you what in a second. My, my preference is to call the one on your palms a push-up position and the one on your elbows a plank. Uh, because before yoga became extremely popular, that's what they were called. But due to yoga's popularity, um, the, they were renamed to uh, kind of be mis to, to misguide people in terms of what's actually going on here. Here's the reason for my preferences. Because in a what yoga calls a high plank, the primary muscles working are the chest and the shoulders. Uh, the abdominal is working ever so slightly, but very, very little. However, in a low plank, what that's what uh, that's what yoga calls it, uh, the abdominals are the primary muscles. So it's just a world of difference in terms of which muscles are working. There is some resemblance in terms of how the exercise looks, but a world of difference in terms of which muscles are working. So when I use the word plank in this video, I'm only strictly referring to what yoga, in yoga they call the low plank. So let's jump in and bust some of the myths spread within this article. So one of the myths spread is that the plank is a great background exercise or prerequisite for things like push-ups, pull-ups, burpees, mountain climbers, and others. Um, I agree with some, I disagree with others. So is it really? Well, again, the prime muscles working in a real plank is um, the abdominals. In push-ups, again, it's chest and shoulders. So the plank um, does not carry over well to an exercise in which other muscles are being used. Of course, if we're using the the, the word, um, if the author of that article is using the high plank variation, yeah, there's a, a little bit of carryover to push-ups. Uh, but even then, not a lot, because a push-up's most difficult position is the bottom position. A high plank or a push-up position only works the easiest position. So even then, there's not, a, not really a great carryover from any plank variation towards push-ups. What about pull-ups? I'm not sure how the author came up with this one, that um, either the low plank or the high plank is a good carryover uh, exercise to pull-ups because it absolutely is not. Um, the low plank works the abdominals. The high plank or the push-up position 
works the chest and triceps. None of those muscles are working in pull-ups. Pull-ups work the muscles of the biceps as well as the lats, the, the back muscles. So I'm not sure in what way either the low plank or the high plank carries over to pull-ups. Uh, I don't see it at all. Burpees. Again, I see why the author would think that the extra, the that e either the low plank or the high plank would work, uh, would carry over to burpees, but here's why it doesn't. In the low plank, it doesn't carry over at all because the abdominals are barely, barely, barely working in the burpees. Um, as for the chest and shoulders, they're working minimally. If you were to do as many burpees as you can and you would stop when you're tired, you wouldn't be tired because your chest and triceps are fatigued. You would be tired because you're out of breath. So it doesn't, so the planks don't even have a great cure to burpees. So he's making a lot of claims in that article that aren't actually correct or aren't actually true. Um, so again, it's a good, it, it's a, an okay carryover to pushups, but it's not a good carryover to pull-ups or burpees or mountain climbers. The next claim he makes is about something called the Copenhagen plank. And that is that it's a good variation of the plank for the obliques. Here is why I disagree. First of all, what is a Copenhagen plank? Here's what it is. In a Copenhagen plank, you are uh, one of your feet, your outer foot or your top foot is on top of a bench. Your bottom foot is just hovering in the air and your elbow is on the ground. And so if you look at which muscles are working um, in, the, in the Copenhagen plank, predominantly is actually the inner thigh muscle of the top leg. If you were to hold this position as long as you can, you would stop, not because your abdominals are tired, not because your obliques are tired, but because your inner thigh uh, muscle is tied on the top leg. Because of that, I'm not saying it's a bad exercise. I'm saying uh, this is not, not relevant to, the, the plank is not relevant to the Copenhagen plank. The only thing they share is a name, <laughs> uh, and that's about it. The side plank works predominantly the obliques. The Copenhagen plank barely works the obliques. Again, that's not the limiting factor, okay? Um, and that's when you do it on the elbow. On the palm, it's not even... Um, it's not the obliques at all. You would uh, you would stop the exercise if you were to hold it as long as possible, either because your shoulder gets tired of the bottom um, of the bottom hand, or because your inner thigh gets tired of the top leg. So again, in no way does the Copenhagen plank um, resemble an actual plank or even a side plank, other than just in, in name, uh, maybe in position, but certainly not in muscles worked. And I'm not saying the Copenhagen plank is a bad exercise. I'm just saying that the actual plank, whether you're using the uh, the, the correct terminology of plank um, or the incorrect terminology of high plank, um, none of them carry over to the Copenhagen plank. Another claim that he makes um, is the shoulder tap plank. What is the shoulder tap plank? Uh, the shoulder tap plank is when you are in a push-up position and you, with your left hand, you tap your right shoulder, then you put it down. And then with your right hand, you tap your left shoulder and put that down. The primary, the primary muscles worked are the chest, shoulders, and triceps. The prior muscle worked in the uh, real plank is the abdominals. So you wouldn't feel your abdominals much in the shoulder tap plank. But just because it's an exercise for the chest and shoulders um, and triceps, is it a good exercise? Because there are a million different exercises. And if there are no criteria by which to go uh, as to what's a good exercise, what's a bad exercise, then any exercise will do. But that's not good enough. You want, if you're going to spend the same amount of time doing a bad thing or a good thing, you might as well do a good thing, do the right thing. And so where did the shoulder ta tap plank come from? My guess is that it came from what I call Insta trainers. These are trainers who are trainers only on Instagram. Uh, they have a lot of followers, but most of the time, 50% or more of what they say is incorrect. It just looks good in a video to people who don't know what they're doing. If people who understand anatomy, physiology, biomechanics, et cetera, look at a shoulder tap plank, they don't understand it. Uh, they don't understand why it's so popular for so little benefit. Um, it's certainly not an abdominal exercise. It's a chest and shoulder exercise, but is it even a good chest and shoulder exercise? And my answer is not, not really. There's a way better exercise you can do um, using better criteria to justify why you're doing it. Does it burn calories? Sure. Does it strengthen the chest and triceps? Not really. Uh, there's better ways to do it. And the range of motion through which you're working is very, very limited. Um, so I don't even think it's that great of an exercise, except for a very select few uh, situations. So again, we're, we're, we're using the terminology here of high plank, um, where, where I want to prefer the term push-up position, which is probably more accurate for what it is. 
Um, the last claim that the author makes is about the body saw. What is the body saw exercise? It is an exercise where you are in a plank position, a legit plank position, and then on your elbows and balls of the feet, you're moving back and forth like a saw. And so in a plank, you are working the abdominals. The greater the distance between the toes and the elbows, the, um, the, the, the greater the work on the abdominals. However, in the body saw, you're spending at least half of your time in an easily supported position, which takes the stress off the abs, diminishing its effectiveness for the abdominal mu muscles. But also because there's movement, you're not pulling with your abs. You're actually pulling with your lats and another muscle called the serratus anterior, which is on the front of the ribs. Because of that, the body saw, I don't consider it a, pre a, a, a very good abdominal exercise. It's a decent serratus exercise. It's a very bad lat exercise, but again, this is this came from Insta trainers who thought it looked cool, and then they started doing it and not getting results with it. Um, anyways, this has been a fun video ranting about things that people do wrong in uh, in, in mainstream media. If you like this video and you want to hear about other rants <laughs> like this one, uh, click like and subscribe. Thank you very much.